Radio Raheem here with uh, everybody knows my favorite guy in boxing, Freddie Roach. I'm going to try to go rapid fire because there's so much we have to talk about. I don't want to stand you up for hours. Uh, let's first of all discuss what happened uh, just this past weekend. Obviously, it's on everybody's mind. It, it seemed that Chavez couldn't stay in the fight competitively. You know, the 12th round was amazing, but those first 11 rounds are so tough. Can you talk to me about what happened? Well, you know, I, I think... Um well, I, honestly, I think our time was a little bit off, and that that, that we didn't uh, actually uh, box enough for, for the. We need a little more sparring, I think, and uh, a little more uh, um, gym workouts instead of living room workouts and so forth. My, I want him to be more in a schedule than training at like sometimes at 12 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, 3 o'clock in the morning. He just, we were all over the place. We, we, we got the work in, but it was kind of scattered. And, you know, if your body's not on the schedule, it'll, it won't respond as well. When your body's on the schedule, it'll respond better. And I think he, I think he just couldn't let his hands go in the early rounds. And, uh, you know, after, like, the, I think it was the 10th round, he took a real bad, he took, he, he hit a lot of shots. I told him, I said, hey, if you don't show me you can win this fight, I'm going to stop it. And he went out and did a little bit better. And then the last round, I said, we need to knock out to win let's go let your hands go I said all you do is throw punches exchange with this guy because I said when he throws punches his head's, his head's way up in the air and he did that knocked him down but the thing is the, the, the sad part about it is we could have done that in the sixth round and then right. we, we would have had time to knock this guy out but the thing is uh, um, you know um, yeah, I I feel it's my fault for letting him get away with it, and uh, I told I told him next time I said we're going to be on a schedule. I said we're going to train at at reasonable hours, uh, even late hours is fine with me as long as it's the same every day. As long as you're on a schedule, your body will respond better to a, to a schedule. So I think um, we need a little, little bit more discipline with that, and uh, I think you'll be you'll, you'll be out the best of him because. Early in the fight, he wasn't letting his hands go because I think he was afraid that he might get tired in the later rounds. And then in the later, in the later rounds, you know, he was towards the end, so he knew he had the gas to, to do it. So I, I, I think it was just more of a mental letdown. If we had been better prepared and more confident in that fight and had a better training camp, I, I think we would have knocked him out like in six rounds. And uh, Martinez is definitely beatable, and we... I, we showed that in the 12th round. We almost had him, but almost uh, only counts in uh, horseshoes and hand grenades. <laughs> this sounds almost like we could be at a press conference for Chavez Martinez, too. It sounds like you want that rematch. Is that something that uh, you think is a good thing for Chavez? Would, would you really want to see Martinez right up next again? Yeah, because, you know, we, we gave that fight away. I mean, honestly, uh, my guy was a bigger, stronger, better fighter in there. I, I think Martinez, he he's, he boxed very well. He throws very good combinations and so forth. But when you press him and put him on the ropes and so forth, he's he's uh, he's not so effective. All right. Now, just about the time that that fight happened, uh, some other news came out that Amir Khan has decided to switch trainers. Uh, can you talk to me about how that happened, how you were informed, how this uh, ultimately became a final decision? Well, I read about it on the internet first, and then um, a lot of people gave him some slack over that, so then he gave me a call the next day, and that, you know, they, they, we, we set up this call, and uh, we, we spoke, and they, you know, I have no hard feelings. I, you know, the, the thing is, uh, he says, you know, he doesn't want to take a back seat to Manny Pacquiao, but now he's going to have to take a back seat to some other fighter because, you know, Virgil Hunter has a fighter that's a very dominant fighter right now, and Amir is going to have to take a back seat to him. <laughs> so, um, but, I, you know, I think Virgil's uh, technically a very good uh, trainer he, with the, the work he's done with Andre Ward. It look, he, they look like a good fit. Can, can, can somebody change another person? I don't think so. I've been trying to get that Amir to be settled down for a long time now and with no success and he likes to exchange a lot and uh, I don't think that's going to change but I, I wish him the best. Now that there's no connection between, there's no triangle between you and Pacquiao and uh, Khan, let me ask this question first. There was also rumors that he said he would keep you if you let Chavez and uh, <laughs> Pacquiao go. Did he actually make that request? Yes.
<laughs> Were you? A, yeah, he did, right? <laughs> well, uh, his uh, it didn't come directly from a mirror. It came from a Sea Valley. His. Um, Promote oh, whatever. whatever he is. Yeah, were you offended by reading reading that online? It seemed like Khan may have handled this pretty poorly from a professional and you know uh, respects. When they, when they first said it to me, I said, "Yeah, okay." I just like because I thought it was a joke, <laughs> you know. I just but uh, then they they asked me in person one time, and then I and then uh, the time in person, I said, "These guys, these guys are serious." So I said, "You know, uh, that's something I just can't do." Okay. Um, if Pacquiao now were to fight Khan, like you know, he could come up against you, some of your fighters. Do you feel like Khan is beatable by the fighters in your stable? Is that is that a fight that you'd be comfortable with now? Well, like I said, I wish you the best, Amir, but stay away from punchers. And my guys are punchers. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, let's talk about Marquez uh, Pacquiao for this fight. Obviously, is nothing new. You, this is the fourth time in. You were there for the first three. Um, what are you going to do differently with a Pacquiao who says that he's hungry like his 20s? He's saying from the podium that he's going to be, you know, the guy we haven't seen in a while. How are you going to take advantage of that? Well, we need that guy, and uh, that's the big sign plus for me. Uh, scratching the uh, cloth up there, he's, uh, we, he says, I need, I need a knockout. And I says, yeah, that's, that's the best thing you've, I've ever heard. We're both on the same page. And uh, he's never predicted a fight before. And uh, to, in, in my life, I tried to get him to predict a fight. And, you know, there was nothing about, like, there was no, like, God doesn't want me to hurt fighters. There was no... I have a mention of God in the whole, the whole sp mm. speech, and uh, uh, I think he, I think he knows that his focus has to be a lot better in this fight, and um, that him making the decision to have the whole training camp in L.A. instead of the Philippines, back and forth and flying around the world in 16-hour flights and the altitude training, I think the whole thing is just really, really good for him, to, and it's very uh, mature and professional of him to pick the right, to make the right choice. Is, uh, uh, this early in training camp, so I'm very happy where he's at. I think we're gonna have a real good fight. Uh, you know, uh, this fight has potential to be great. We know one thing about Marquez: uh, when he goes down, he gets up and fights back. And uh, he, the first two fights we had that happen. The, the third fight was a little less compelling because I think they. I think Manny took him a little bit lightly and just didn't really go after him like he would, like he did in the first two. Uh, but I, I think if we bring back the first round and start off there, we'll be in good shape. Now, Manny says the belts are important, but they're not the most important thing. Obviously, Bradley's holding all the belts. You feel like essentially he stole those belts. Is it important for you that Manny go reclaim his titles? Uh, we need to fight the bigger fights, the ones the fights the fans want to see. The Bradley fight, there's no, there's just no audience out there. I mean, for the Bradley fight, and there's an audience for this fight. And uh, you know, Mar Mar Marquez sells tickets, and Bradley doesn't. And the thing is, that was the bottom line. And, and the fa the factor of making this fight is what's what's the bigger fight. And then you know, w with Mayweather on the horizon, possibly because Fifty Cent, Manny are, are talking, and there's negotiations going on. Um, it's a good sign to me, you know, because they are talking about the fight. I mean, they're not just being friends and so forth. And, you know, we're not going to take him on as our manager for our last three fights of our life or something <laughs> like that. But we're, so the negotiations, they, they're talking about the Mayweather fight. What else would they be talking about? So that's always a good time when there's talk. So something, something might happen. So um, I, hope, I hope it happens before it's too late. Now that 50 Cent connection is a really big deal. Obviously, the fight everybody's been waiting for for it seems like forever. How comfortable are you with Manny working with 50 Cent? And then also, what's the relationship with Manny Bob Arum 50 Cent? Is is Manny thinking of promoting himself or beyond going beyond top rank? No, Bob told me he can deal with 50. He says he, he says he likes him, and so he, I can talk with him. I can negotiate with him. And uh, Todd's been talking to him. My has been talking to him. He actually called my cons the other day when I was with him, so he had to excuse himself to take a call. So they are talking, and they, but they're not talking about it. What else would they be talking about? Let's face it. they got to be talking about the Mayweather fights. That's a good sign. When there's talk, something might happen. So uh, hopefully the, the, 
the best two fighters in the world will we'll meet soon. Now, uh, finally, Fred, you've had six you know, incredible years. I believe it's six, uh, you know, Trainer of the Year awards, the TV show. Uh, it, it's been such phenomenal success on a roll. This year has been tough. Three losses in a row, and I, I can't have four, so we're going to train our asses off of this one. Uh, Pacquiao is going to be in shape, and uh, I hate to lose, and uh, but I, I found out it's part of life, and uh, I hate that, but, uh, you know, some controversy, some almost, some this or that, but they are losses, and I do, I do take them personally, and I feel that I'm not doing my job enough, and uh, I will, I have rededicated myself, and I will, I will work harder, and I will work my fighters harder, and maybe I've been a little bit too easy on them, and. Uh, that's not going to happen. Have, being the most decorated trainer in recent history, having won that fight, I mean, won that uh, award six times, I feel like I can ask you this. At this point in the year, who do you think is trainer of the year? You know, I thought Virgil Hunter was a great choice for last year because he, I think he has the best fight in the world, and he might win it again. And he, because uh, uh, Ward is, you know, a, a great boxer, very technical. He can he switch styles with different opponents and so forth. Uh, he's competition, actually, with Virgil Hunter. Um, I think he might get it. He might get it again. Thank you, Freddie. Radio Rahim. I'm gonna pick Freddie Roach every time. <laughs> <laughs> Radio Rahim with the legend, Freddie Roach. Thanks, man. Thanks.